on the breakfast world health organization max october 10th as world health mental health day to raise awareness about mental health issues we'll be speaking with an expert also on the breakfast the chief of defense staff general loki rabo and chief executive officer of the Niger National Petroleum Company Limited, Melikari, vowed to investigate the illegal insertions of the pipeline in Yokori area of Delta State. Don't forget, we'll also be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. We call it Off the Press. Welcome to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Happy holiday. And that's because it's Eid al Maluj. Uh, so happy celebration to everyone right here. Well, of course, we have to be here to keep you up to date with what's making the rounds in different parts of the world and in the country. I am Messi Bopo. And as always, we'll start off with our top trending conversation. First on the list is that the chairman of the Lagos State Parks and Garage Management Committee, M. C. Oluoma, led a five man million uh led a five million man rally in Lagos State yesterday that was Sunday. So the match actually commenced with uh, a crowd at the Teslim Balogun Stadium which ended at Oshodi. Hopefully it ended because it yesterday in Lagos State we actually experienced a downpour. But if you look at the reaction that also generated a lot of reaction. Let's not forget this is a period of campaigning Politicking has actually started according to the calendar and, you know, the laws governing elections. And so we had witnessed first of October, uh, supporters of the Peter Obi presidential uh, candidate, I mean, those who are supporting his presidential candidate, uh, hoping that he becomes a president come 2023, took to the streets, the trunk out you know, for the rally. So it feels like it's going to be a culture. We hope to see other, you know, presidential uh, members of other, or those who are supporting different uh, presidential candidate trunk out to the street. Yesterday, it was that of the APC and uh, MC Lomo, very popular in legal state. He led uh, a five million man rally. And uh, that was it. You can see the pictures already. That's a very huge crowd. But let's talk about the conversations that made it to the social media space, especially, you know, Twitter and other spaces. One of it is that people talked about, you, you know, the difference between uh, the police injunction. Let's not forget that there was some press release that was made out at the time that, uh, you know, those who were going to be rallying for Peter Obi. I expected, you know, to go through a particular route or expected to behave in a certain way and what have you. And so a lot of persons have raised question why uh, we did not have the same press release or press statement put out saying, hey, you are supposed to start from here and stop here. You're not supposed to stop here. You're supposed to move to this other part of the divide. That was a conversation that made it on social media. And some people think that there's a certain kind of bias. And uh, I, I saw a tweet, really, because, you know, looking at it, I saw a certain tweet that talked about, hey, you shouldn't be talking about this, you know, because when the hashtag, I mean, the end has happened, we saw, you know, what uh, emanated, we saw the behavior. Well, it seemed to me and it seemed to almost everyone that there seemed to be a comparison between uh, the protests that happened in October 2020 and those who were supporting Peter Obi. I really do not understand, you know, why that is. Uh, but in terms of, you know, presence of security operatives, there were, uh, it was seen, and those who actually monitored and from the reports that we got from our reporters, we had the presence of uh, the Nigerian police across, you know, ensuring that there was decorum, if you want to say, and that people actually uh, respected the law and what have you. But those who were out also complained that it wasn't really easy because movement, if you see this crowd, it wasn't, it wasn't just, you know, a child's play. It was a lot at the end of the day. And that's it. We'll move away. Another issue that has made a lot of Nigerians talk is the issue of Arag Beshola seeking the release of 30% of prison inmates nationwide. 
The Minister of Interior, Rauf Aregbashala, uh, says that he will meet with state governments to agree on the mass release of uh, about 30% of inmates from custodial centers across the country. Well, according to him, he said the reason for the interface was necessary as that you have 90% of inmates being held for uh, contravening various state laws and 70% of the 75,635 inmates at the present were awaiting trial. The minister also said that the federal government offenders in the system were far less than 10%, adding that the bulk of the people in the custody were those who had, uh, you know, run foul of state laws. He added that the essence for all of this, because this is also a very sensitive issue, really, uh, that the reason for this is that there's need for us to decongest uh, prisons. And so decongestion of 253 custodial centers nationwide was necessary as some of the inmates had no reason to remain in custody. Better structure of criminal justice is what I would always advocate for. Otherwise, uh, you know, he said that the prison will be left congested, overcrowded. Some people didn't take this lightly, but he's actually moved further down because he's written a letter to the governor's forum. He's written a a letter to the Nigerian Governors Forum to allow him come and address them on how to support the process of decongestion, or however, the release of about 30% of those uh, prisoners. So there's need for these governors to support the process. Let's not forget that uh, the release is actually a national issue across the entire states of the Federation. And that's not sitting well. The reason for the back and forth, some people have gone on Twitter and Facebook and whatever you to say, hey, this is also another ploy. The election is actually close. We're getting to a period where there will be elections. And so this might just be another political move, you know, by the elite or the ruling class to actually act their interest, those who would help them rig the election. There's a lot of thoughts that you would see on the social media space, but this is happening because there's a, a trust deficit in the system. And that's what happens when people no longer trust, you know, the government. Every other time, I don't know if you're actually in the know of when the government puts out a statement and say, hey, we're going to do X, Y, Z. People just, you know, begin to doubt the government. There's a lot of doubts that's been cast and there's a lot of statement, statement that's been put out. People no longer trust the system. And it's really, really unfortunate to have, uh, you know, a system where uh, the people have lost confidence. <laughs> you would say a vote of uh, no confidence has been uh, you know, imposed on this government. And that's why you're having all of this thought. People no longer trust the system. So whether or not this is true or not true, so you have people having different thoughts and the thing that this is biased. I feel like there's a lot to this that the government is hiding. Why would you, you know, go ahead to say you want to release prisoners because of, you know, the fact that the prisons are decongested? But if you look at the, you know, the entire conversation, however, you want to ask yourself, wouldn't it be necessary for us to have a legislation? If we look at the administrative justice or justice or the judicial system of our country, and we understand that cases are being delayed and there's a lot going on, and over time you have those who are actually innocent being kept or being held down there for a, lot, for a period of time, one would think that it would be important that there should be some legislative, you know, concerns or move at this point to address uh, the judicial process of our country. But what business? If this is actually a state issue, because those who are held on trial and what have you, it's within different states of the Federation. Should this really be the concern, uh, you know, of the Minister of Interior. We understand the need to decongest our prison, but this also, a lot of persons have thought that it should be an act of our legislation. And so the conversation would definitely continue. Some people think that it's because we're closer to the election 2023, and this is also another political strategy for the ruling class, you know, to uh, go ahead and mastermind whatever it is that they have in, in mind. These are the thoughts. But I would say this is premised on the fact that people have lost confidence and trust in the government of the day. 
we're hoping that the government would do better. Not also forgetting the fact that over time we have uh, the release of the remaining captives, those who were victims of the Abuja Kaduna uh, attack. They've been released. And so you have people saying, oh, there's been a lot of negotiation. Of course, the government will say we don't negotiate with terrorists, but how did we get the release of this person? There's a lot. And I want to believe that, you know, the government of the day will step up and redeem herself, you know, from all of these issues that have been put out by the people of Nigeria. We also have another issue that's making the rounds. President Mohamed Buhari on Friday had presented the 2023 budget as a proposal, 20.5 trillion naira to the National Assembly. And so if you look at this, the federal government is set to borrow 8.8 .8 trillion naira to fund the budget. Now, what's causing a lot of people to talk is the fact that there's a plan, uh, you know, for the president and the vice president to spend about 11.9 trillion naira. Let's go uh, through the breakdown now. Buhari and his vice will spend 3.3 billion naira on local and foreign trips. The president himself is, is expected to spend about 301 million naira on food stuff. The vice president will spend 156 million naira on food stuff. But at a time where we talk about, you know, cutting the excesses of government, reducing the cost, because Nigeria is at the point where we're saying we don't have resources. Finance is a major issue for us. Let's take a look at the capital expenditure for the 2023 proposal. A lot of economic experts will say, hey, it's just a proposal. And so capital expenditure has been pegged at 5.35 trillion naira. And I remember once upon a time when this government came on board and he said that, you know, uh, we were really big on, you know, uh, reducing the cost of governance. And so the presidential air fleet so far at the time uh, cost, you know, uh, taxpayers a lot. Remember in 2015, prior to 2015, when this government came on board, the administration of President Mohamed Buhari, and uh, they were really against, you know, the uh, cost of governance, especially the presidential air fleet uh, that was costing a lot. And so they promised that we were going to sell a lot of, you know, aircraft or uh, this uh, plane just to reduce costs because the more you have them, the more it would be expensive to maintain them. But it would interest you to know that at 2015, that the presidential air fleet so far cost taxpayers a total of 41.9 billion naira, contrary to the promise made by the president 2015 uh, during his presidential campaign to reduce waste in our system. And I'm asking myself, if you look at the entire budget that's been put out, how do we even say that we're going to be spending that amount, 11.92 billion naira, on local and foreign trips? I'm not even sure if that's a calculation. I mean, if we're talking about uh, feeding and what have you there. So are we really understanding? Are we really sincere in our thoughts and our plans? Are we really saying that we don't have money? One would expect that this government would reduce the cost of governance. We are going to be borrowing about 8.8 .8 trillion naira to fund the budget of 20 point. And then we're also projecting to spend for feeding and, you know, the expenses, what have you, of the president and his vice, 11.92 trillion naira. That's a lot. I really, I have been trying to understand and, uh, you know, understand the rationale behind this thought and this behavior or this proposal. But that's where, you know, we call it a wrap this morning on uh, our top trending. We'll take a break and when we return, it'll be time for us to go through the front pages of National Daily. So we'll call it Off the Press. Open up on Kataria. We'll join the conversation. Please stay with us. <laughs> 